Hi, I'm Satin Brownie, and this is Finding Happy Podcast. So it's morning, and I am feeling good. I didn't. When I woke up this morning, I started listening to Marshall J's album. Listen to me, like listen to me. This album is amazing. It's amazing. I'm going to be speaking with her on this episode of my podcast and I'm going to be speaking with her producer, the person who produced the music because I love music. I I thank God for music and musicians. I love music. It's um, without music, I oh, I wouldn't be here. I think depression would have killed me without music. So music for me is, it gives me life. It gives me hope. It makes me feel better. It brings me so much joy. And I'm telling you, this album, my favorite song on the album, and my favorites have been changing, but my favorite today is I Know You. Um, And it is so weird because it's not necessarily the kind of song I would have been drawn to naturally or usually, but I love that song. It's so compact and to the point and just easy it's easy and it really connects me with with um a higher than me when i listen to that song and it calms me right and so um i listen to that song pretty much every morning <laughs> and my other favorite is um i love favor on the album and i love grateful oh i have so many favorites i love victory as well i love triumph I didn't know I'd like Unconditional Lover, but I do. I love, love, love Happiness Blooms in Red. Um, Funny, I have not, there's only one song on the album I have not yet listened to, and I don't know why. And it is, it's all about you. I have not listened to that song. Not deliberately, I just haven't listened to it yet. Because I keep replaying (laughs) the ones that I like. And as soon as I play, play a new one, I fall in love with it too. So I know you will love this album. I really think you should check it out. It's one of those, um, music it's one of those albums that you can listen to in the morning just to when you wake up to set the tone for your day you can listen to like grateful you know to practice gratitude and you could listen to it's a good day you can also listen to favor i mean it's it, it's it's an album that for me it's um it's it connects me back with my own happiness and lets me know that you know what it's okay that's a that's a feeling it gives me it, it makes me feel like you know what it's okay and this like a, a, a couple minutes ago i felt like i was just going to cry and i i wasn't even sure why i just chalked it up to you know i'm a woman i get emotional sometimes but you know sometimes i feel so unsafe and i feel so unsure and i feel so vulnerable and um marcia j's album is one of those that i listen to to feel better you know there are others that i listen to because i love like miranda um the miranda experience i love her song open heaven you know because sometimes we forget that we're not just here by ourselves he he didn't just drop us here and leave us (laughs) you know and um there's this this um thing that i practice all the time like if i'm not feeling um if if i feel unsafe or i feel like um my world is upside down or i feel like something's gonna go wrong you know something i have this gut feeling like something just might be off and uh, maybe it's paranoia i don't know and i i i don't know but it's instinct i believe the universe speaks to you it's not paranoia it's your instinct listen to it um so what i do sometimes is i i repeat this to myself i am well all is well all is well all is well it really really works i remember times when I just couldn't see, I just, I just couldn't see myself getting past certain challenges that unintentionally I made choices that led me to, but that was indirect, right? Because sometimes things happen to you, not because you caused it, but still there were some decisions that you made that brought you to where it is. And sometimes God, the universe wants you to get through those experiences so you can grow and sometimes when you get there it's like it's so dark or it just seems so hard to get on the other side you're wondering how the heavens am i gonna get on the other side will this day clear will this day pass will i be okay again and what i say is just close your eyes 
breathe and repeat this. I am well. All is well. I am well. All is well. All is well. When you don't know what to do, let go. It means that it's not your battle. Because if it was your battle, then he will tell you what to do. Your higher power, whoever that is, I don't care if it's not God, if it's not the universe, whatever it is. If it's a, it's, a, it's a part somewhere inside of you, it is there. There is a greatness inside of you that prepares you and takes you through to the other side. Okay? There is a greatness inside of you that creates solutions when there seem to be none. Tap into yourself. Release, let go, forgive, empty yourself and connect so you can connect with the greater, deeper, amazing you. There is something I did one time. I remember <laughs> I'm, I'm a thinker. And I always have great ideas. Like I'm always having ideas. I have to constantly, sometimes I have to wake up and write just, just so that my mind will stop thinking. Right. And I remember, um, I was going through a period where I felt like I had exhausted all my great ideas. <laughs> if that's possible. But I felt like I had exhausted all my great ideas. And I remember all that was in my mind was just the negative and the things that were going wrong and the things that I couldn't fix. And I was like, I remember I sat down and I'm like, think there's another great idea inside of you like and I remember thinking that person say that you don't use the full capacity of your brain and I remember I went into my closet and I closed the door and I was in that darkness and I sat down and I willed myself to think I remember I thought I was in such deep thinking that my brain not my head hurt my brain somewhere inside my head was hurting me and I remember just thinking, 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 just, just like forcing myself. I did not know that I could actually get my brain to work more than I do. But I, you have, well, for me, I had to close my eyes. I had to be in a dark place and I had to open my mind and say, it is possible. So let's check it out. Let's try it. It works. It works. And for me, music is one of those elements that when I can't do it on my own, when I can't get myself past the, 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 the pits of anxiety inside my stomach, the nuts, I listen to music and it's good. I, you know what? God bless musicians. May, may musicians be blessed. I'm so thankful. If you're a musician, thank you. If you do music, if you sing, if you thank you because your gift and your talent and your 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 production really empowers transforms and inspires people to get past their rough days and to get rid of the nuts on the inside of them this album that marsha does the favor it is i'm telling you that the music is amazing and her voice is so relaxing it is so her her her, her voice is very what should I call it? It's it's very soothing. Well, for me anyway. That's just, just just my opinion. You may feel differently, but her voice for me, it's very smooth. It's very soothing. Like it 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 pampers. <laughs> it pampers. It pampers my, pampers my mind. For me anyway, right? And give it a listen. I think it's really really lovely. I mean, I I I got the album free, but I still bought it. It's that good. Like it mean that much to me. You know, so we're going to have a conversation with her to kind of understand um, how it all happened. How, what was it, what was it like recording this album? Um, what were her experiences? What, what, um, for her to take us through that journey. And uh, we're also going to speak with her producer, Carl Marit, um, to just kind of understand how it all came to, together. Thank you so much for joining me on Finding Happy Podcast. <laughs> I'm Satin Brownie. Hi, I'm Marsha J. Hi, and Marcia my J. new album, Favor, is ready and you can get it right now. 
Available on all digital platforms, iTunes, Amazon, and all the others. This album will inspire worship, dance, love, and joyful praise. Visit MarshaJMinistries.com or email bookmarshaj at gmail.com. Get favored today. Thank you for joining me on Finding Happy Podcast. Marsha J, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. Thanks for asking. Thank Wonderful. You. Absolutely. My absolute pleasure to have you. I know it's a great time for you right now, correct? Correct. Very correct. Because you just dropped your first album. Yay! You've done the EP. Now this is the actual album album and the name is favor tell us what is that like what's that feeling like just just having completed it after all that hard work that we spoke of the last time you were here know that it's done it's on the market it's available for persons to 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 have it who how are you feeling i still feel like a real mother mm-hmm. um it's been a long time coming. We started the project in 2015 wow. and actually completed and in the digital world and on shelves and people are asking for it. It's kind of surreal. It feels unreal in a sense. Wow. But very, very, it feels like an accomplishment. You know, I'm learning to recognize my wings. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is yeah. definitely, definitely a win. I know persons in the industry who are struggling to put out music for how many years now because of so many things and that's why i feel favored because it took this amount of time 2015 2016 2018 it's still shorter than some persons that i know so i'm grateful yes fantastic i have a copy in my hand at the moment i really really like the album um i find it very thrilling to listen to it and my favorite is i know you <laughs> why did you name the album favor what do you mean by that word uh, okay, so favor is pretty much defined as receiving or getting a grace that you don't necessarily deserve. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was just the favor of God why this whole moment happened. Um, I originally did not see myself in this position. And then when I started to accept my call or my authentic vocation, yes. to be at peace with being in alignment with the will of God, then there we just go. Naturally, fall in place. I was like, "Why didn't I do this long time ago?" <laughs> you know, but God makes all things beautiful in His time. So I really do yes. feel favored. You know, all the elements that came together to make this project possible. This is just the favor of God. Nothing wonderful done of my own. On, of your own because it's been quite successful since it's dropped right could you tell us some of the accomplishments since it's dropped i know it's been on radio air, it's getting airplay on radio i know you've been on 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 um yeah. radio programs not just locally but um in other parts of the caribbean tell us about that please yes um it has been really great. Promotions have been happening here in Jamaica, as you mentioned before. Nice. On CVM, local radio stations like Gospel, JA, and TBC Radio had a recent interview in Antigua. Well, I was a radio station in Antigua. I'm pretty much excited about that. And I'm right. sure there's more to come. I have persons in the U.S. that have purchased online. And Yay! Yeah, they're excited for me. Yes, because I'm also seeing I'm also seeing the fan fan reactions yes, from favor reaction. where people are listening to the radio and video record it and share and I it. I didn't even ask for it. How does that make you feel? Like, I mean, as entrepreneurs, we hope that we're able to produce a service or a product that we can put out there, and we get to the stage where people start accepting it and uptaking it, and interacting with it and telling us about it. What kind of feeling do you have internally when you see that happening? Boy, I just, I, just, I know it's internally, I want to feel like I want to cry. That's okay. Because you never know if a product that you put out as an entrepreneur, if it will take. Like right. Well, no, this is music and it is gospel music. And um, the music that you produce is not necessarily for everyone because everyone has a different taste and i'm getting reactions from elders i'm getting reactions from wow 
So I realized that the album is meeting the needs of persons across various age groups. And that's awesome. That is phenomenal. That is fantastic. I mean, I love the album. I love Favor. Um, I, I, what, I, what I like about the album, and I gave a review at the introduction of the podcast, um, but what I like about it is I feel like I get a potpourri of music, of just beautiful music. That's what I, yeah, it's like the, a complement of, of different types of music, you know? You have soul food on there that reminds me of India Ari. You have, um, there's one of them that you do where, to me, it, it reminds me of Chevelle Franklin. Um, and then, of course, my fate, and then, you, and then the themes, the themes that you have, you cover on the album. What inspired those themes like grateful, favor, um, knowing God, spiritual food? What inspired the themes? Let me start by saying that I did not write all of these songs. So mm -hmm. the producers along with myself, and I think the songs that- Right, we, and we spoke with the, the, we interviewed the producer for this, for the, for the segment, Carl. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. One of the writers is Keith, that's Carl's twin. And he was spiritual food. Now we were just basically playing around with some stuff where the studio we were tired. And then he just came in and his energy in the room was just like, wow. wow. And then we started writing. And he said, why not? Let's record this. Because we, <laughs> we, you know, God is really our sustainer. He's referred to in the Bible as living water, bread of life. So bread and water, that's food. You know, so... So after playing around with it and, and then beginning to put it together and things like that, it came to life. And I love the way it comes to life because it, it has such a humor. Mm -hmm. it, oh my goodness. <laughs> the song Happy. Yes. There's a part in the song Happy where it's like you're laughing. Mm -hmm. For me, and it's me personally, it really, it is so thrilling. Like it's, it makes you happy. Like the, the, the way it's done is so tasteful, so unique, and so innovative and creative. I think that's me personally, right? Because I, I, I listen to the album and usually I'm listening to country or other things, but it had this unique thing when you're laughing and singing and it's just beautiful. What inspired that? Really and truly, when you, when you sing a song, you have to put your mind in a certain place. And when I was singing Happy, I'm, I always I was just post, um, focused on positive moments that I have had in my Christian journey. And I literally was singing and smiling and saying, yes, Jesus does make me happy. Right. You know? So that's what brought out that effect in that particular song. Okay. I know that when you were recording this album, because I've read the article, you had a double spread in the Jamaica Observer, where you were in twice, right? Two parts, one and two, two weeks. And we, I read about your experience when you were doing the album. And the producer says it was pretty much done through pain. It was stamped in pain, right? Um, so you went through quite a bit when you were doing the album. Can you tell us a little about that? Okay, during the time that I was doing the album, I had a particular, I had a bleeding issue that was ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I had been in America at the time for a second opinion. All right, so I had done some x-rays and other tests that showed I had a problem, but they just were not able to identify the root problem. Wow. They were treating the symptoms, basically, trying to control the bleeding prior to that. I had had a blood transfusion um, on different types of iron tablets. After a while, my system got used to them. I started having allergies until they had to just directly inject the iron into my blood system, like for a week. Wow. And if you've ever done that treatment, it burns like pepper. My mom's a nurse. She couldn't even do it because of how painful it was for me. So she had to have one of our nursing friends do it. So um, I went up. Uh, for that purpose and also to do the album so during that time i had to be trying to monitor myself because when you lack iron you also lack energy so yes. being in studio early morning right back until early morning the next day like <laughs> one yes. you do a number on your body and if you don't take a break it's you know your body yes. just goes haywire 
So it was in studio. The producers were very kind and they were, they were gentlemen, absolute. Because even as the article says, if, for those who have not read the article, there were days when I bled in studio. You know, mm-hmm. and then I just be like, okay, you need to take a break. And I did not want to take a break because I was so appreciative of the opportunity. They were the ones that had to tell me to stop. You know, and they did whatever they needed to do, whether it was a warm towel or get me something to eat, or it was a beautiful, but it was a very horrifying experience, I would say. You're hardworking, Marsha J. I mean, to me, that demonstrates the kind of commitment and dedication and, and gumption that entrepreneurs have to have to really achieve whatever it is they want. And it sounds to me like you, you did the work. Yes. Yes, I did. And um, I just, you know, in my mind, I was saying to myself, because I really, honestly, at the time, didn't think I would live this, this long. Wow. Um, based on how I felt inside. Because sometimes you just have this feeling inside. And I said, if I was going to leave something in the earth, what have I done with my Christianity so far? How have I um, left a legacy, made an impact? So it was important to me that this project was done and it was done right. You know, so the messages and how I interpreted it, because some of the songs, some of the songs that were not written by me, it took me a while to interpret it because for a creative person, you have to feel it inside so that it can properly, properly let it out. You know, sometimes I had to stop, start over, you know, had a little Bible study so that the writer could tell me exactly what mode he was in when he wrote the songs. I could properly interpret the same. So it was really an exciting, interesting experience. Well, I admire you for that. I admire you. I, I mean, I applaud you as well. And I, I think it's important to, to really understand what you've gone through because know that the product is here and we're looking at it and we're feeling it. I mean, personally, I feel like I feel what you've, the work you put into the album. I, I really feel like I feel it. I, I can feel it, right? I feel you coming out when I listen to it. And I'm not just saying this because um, of our affiliations. Like I really do listen to the album, right? And I think it's important for persons to understand that you didn't just get up one day, record, and then here it is. It's important for persons to understand what you went through to, to, to have this done. Um, Say that again. It was a journey. Yes. The different genres that I tried to bring out. Mm-hmm. That was an exciting part of the project as well. And the foreign languages and things like yes, that. Yes, you had Jewish on there. Yes, and he Fantastic. Was, so, you know, just thinking about cross-cultural ministry. Yes. To different nations and stuff like that. So It's beautiful. That is beautiful. How... How do you, after you put in all that work, do you celebrate your wins, your success? Is this a success for you? It is a success, and the way I celebrate might not be traditional. I think I feel most happy or most satisfied when I hear someone talk about what they love about the album Mm. and how it ministers to them and how it touches them. Um, For me... I don't need to go out and have a drink or party or take a day or something. That just gives me peace just to know that you found something on you that was for you. You felt like I did that for you. Yes. You know, so I, that's how I celebrate. I know it's not traditional celebration. It's okay. If, if that's, you see, what it is is you found your purpose. You've, you're doing work that heals you. Right. And when you're in your purpose, it's like you don't feel like you're working. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, what's your me time? Do you have me time? How do you take care of self, especially given your illnesses? Uh, can I be honest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to say that I need to probably restructure my me time. However, um, during that season, I did not have a choice but to be in bed most of the times because wow. I needed rest because my oxygen count was very low. So even if I stood up to sing, I could not have sung for very long. 
and um, I'm always tired because my iron was just way out. I'm taking in iron and letting it out at the same time. How is it now? Is it, is it, is it any better? Oh yeah, it's like 100% better now. Wonderful. It's more controlled and doctors are on top of it and I'm, I'm trying to do my best to stay on top of it. Yes. Um, so what are some of the medication or the interventions that have helped you? Um, I can't remember the names because they're quite big and That's long. okay. That's all right. <laughs> the primary thing was that I needed iron. Oh, okay. Needed a blood transfusion, which that in itself might sound simple, but it's not because a person's, even though you're the same blood type, I ended up having allergies. Mm. Say, when I did my research before saying yes, it's one of the natural reactions, but it's annoying to be scratching every minute. And mm. then at one point, my breath stopped during a treatment, and that was frightening, like really frightening. Wow. So it's, in terms of medication, the amount per day was bothering me. I had to take like more than a dozen, three times a day that sort of thing because they were treating different symptoms mm -hmm. you know, they were treating different symptoms so at the time it was exhausting having to take medications time yourself with your phone going to the bathroom every 15 minutes including during your sleep time so mm -hmm. it, i went to work most days i was working in corporate jamaica very tired um and it was it showed even if i had on makeup you know, but it was hard to explain to people why I was like that. They just couldn't understand. Have they so, figured out what was wrong? Um, they have just left it at polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm. Yeah, okay. But some days it felt like it was more than that. But I'll just leave it at what they have said. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, I think it also, um, in the article you said it was a case where you bled for a year. Yes. Non-stop. Yeah, there was a, a <sighs> season where that happened and it's not because I didn't go to the doctor or I was careless or whatever it just wouldn't stop so some days it was a lot some days it wasn't a lot but the fact is that it just never continued stopped. right it just never stopped so that was that was frightening there were days when I went to work and my dad would drive me to work because he understood what was happening thank God for yes. men our men and I would get to the door of my job and I could not get out the car because I was bleeding so bad on the seat. Wow. So, and I just called my supervisor and I said, if you don't believe me, I'm in the car outside, you can come. And she said, okay, you can go home. You know, until it became a threat to my job. So, um, unless you're in the position, it's really kind of... It's an oh, I get it. I, I get it. You know, um, I think it takes empathy just to understand that other people experience things that sometimes you may not have experienced and you may not be able to see it with your own natural eyes. Yeah. But I think empathy, through empathy, we, what, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from that experience that you think other people could benefit from? For example, uh, employees, staff, people who may go through the same thing like you. I would say... Be kind to people because you never know what they're going through. That's the first thing. The second thing is, like I said, empathy is really big. Mm -hmm. Even though in the real world, you will hear it's nothing personal, it's just business. And that's something that was said. It's nothing personal, it's just business. And um, for the individual, I would say, try your best to understand where you are mentally and physically and do everything you can to re-stabilize because sometimes we can be in a panic to function because we are non-functioning that we end up not functioning even more you know sometimes and that is where support groups and um, maybe just talking to somebody is concerned because i had severe panic attacks because I realized that I could not function at work. I remember being at the copier and I almost passed out at the copier and there was a customer that caught me. Mm -hmm. So um, be patient with yourself. You might not understand everything, but chronically to write it down, take your time, see a professional, and, try, and support is critical. From staff, from home, from wherever, support is extremely critical. How do you, how do you remain so strong? 
I do not know. I think it's just God. The song Jesus prayed for me, there's a section in it that said I thought I would lose my mind. That was true. I was actually put on some drugs <laughs> that would help to calm me down. And I actually, I didn't take them. They, they, they diagnosed me as being clinically depressed or severely depressed. And I had another, I knew another person that was on the same tablet. And she told me, she said, Marsha, when I take the tablet, I feel like I want to walk in the middle of the road. And I flushed it because I'm saying, how can I take something that's supposed to make me feel better and it's going to make me feel worse before I feel better? I couldn't compute that in my mind, you know? So, but I think it's just the grace and mercy of God. There were many days I cried. And this is just real talk. When you're depressed, you don't want to bathe. You don't want to see the world. You close your windows. You know, my parents had to be like really radical. If my aunts came by, they would make sure that I eat and stuff like that. Because you just felt helpless. In your mind, there's one thing going on. And then in your body, there's a whole set of stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And then there are persons who don't understand that think maybe you share a particular responsibility or use sickness as an excuse. To, to not do things because looking at me, I looked okay, but I wasn't okay. It was when I was in the hospital and they came to see me that I actually got an official apology to say, I really didn't think you were really that sick. Wow. That it was psychosomatic. Mm -hmm. So, but it really wasn't just a, a lot was just going on. You know, so that you yourself couldn't even interpret, let alone communicate effectively. No, I really couldn't. I really couldn't. So I'm grateful for my parents. My brothers were amazing, even though they didn't quite understand. They checked on me, made sure that I eat and stuff like that. Some girls from church came by, washed my clothes. It's just, it's the humanness of it. It's, it, yes. it's, it, it really humbles you. It really does. Wow, that's. I mean, I'm tearing up, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. And on a lighter note, you've recently been ordained yes. as a minister. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you so much. What, are you, what, what do you feel? What is that experience? Um, let me tell you the story behind that. Please do. <laughs> yes. I was actually selected for ordination before. I just didn't think that I was in a good place to, to, to accept it. Right. To accept it, I was questioning a lot of things, and I'm saying it's for the real people out there, not for the people that say, oh my God, yes, I deserve it. And, uh, no. I was looking at a series of things at the time when I said, I'm not ready. It's important for us to know we're not ready because taking on the call of God on your life, something serious, it really is. So I had postponed it, but I had forgotten about it. And uh, maybe like a week prior to the event, I was called into a meeting and said, okay, we, we, we still think that you can, but we are selecting you for a, a different position. So it was first evangelist, and then they said, okay, we want to grant you. We see you as minister, so we want to do that. And... Um, it's a part of me to stop, stop running from the call of God. Because remember in the first interview, I said, all I wanted to do was to have a nine to five job, have a great family, and just serve the Lord with your mess. You know, but right. here God is saying, I have a higher call for you. And I mm -hmm. think what I've given you, it can serve a much greater purpose. And so I surrendered to that. And I said, okay, God, but if I'm going to do this, I'm not doing it without you. You know, so mm -hmm. if you're going to allow me to get this, then you have to be the best <laughs> How has it been so far? It How's has it going. Been, it's been good. It's been, yes. it's been good. Um, I don't really feel anything different inside. I'm just being myself and being what I've always done. You know, if I'm called upon to do anything or for whatever reason, I still make the time to minister and do what I need to do. Whether it's encouraging somebody, praying with someone, you know, or giving an idea at a meeting or... You know, just whatever capacity I can serve, I just go ahead and serve in that capacity. Right. right. What is your message to your followers and fans or the people you minister to? It's always been from religion to relationship. Mm -hmm. One Explain of the, that. the challenges um, I've always had growing up as a pastor's kid is to 
understand the difference between doing what they tell you to do as opposed to having a relationship with God for yourself and understanding the mechanics of that. I've always questioned the genesis in terms of God coming down in the cool of the day and having a talk with Adam. I will remember saying growing up, God, how cool would that be? So you can come down and talk to me and we're just chilling and drinking two bag juice. And you <laughs> tell me how you met the giraffe, the man, the hippos, and how you came up with this and that. And how you name every star. That's what the Bible says. Like he has a name for every single star. So wow. I'm like, that's real relationship. And that's the kind of thing that we should have. And then when I started to not be so hard on myself in terms of being legalistic about religion and okay, I have to wear a hat, I have to um, wear something long. There are cultures that I know of that they serve the Lord, but they don't wear tops somewhere in Africa. You understand? So mm -hmm. how do we justify that as opposed to what we think religion is as opposed to our relationship with the Lord when cultural influences have something to do mm -hmm. uh, as well? And I also use the cross as the easiest way to explain from religion to relationship the relationship aspect of it so we have the the vertical beam that goes down to up so that's our relationship with god and the horizontal beam which is our relationship with each other i think that's so profound it is it is absolutely i know that you have an, a column our to our conversations right yeah. in the north Coast. Us, right what is that about so the art of our conversations is geared towards targeting young people yes. and how they see their relationship with God from different aspects. So we'll be looking at topics like gratitude, favor, and you know, there are other topics that are pertinent to them in order to aid them to have a closer walk with the creator. Right, for better life outcomes, huh? Yes. Right, right, awesome. Uh, I, think, I think you're an inspiration. You, you, you inspire me. Um, uh, yes, when I listen to your story and I get an understanding, and you know what? It, 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 your story is a lesson for me too, where sometimes we see people making decisions and we're thinking to ourselves, so how is it you say one thing, but you seem like you're doing something else and we don't understand. I think what you're saying is, Forgive them if you think they're going wrong and be kind to them anyway, because you never know what's really going on. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I think too, sometimes we try to calculate um, behaviors and people, so it's easy for us to compute it. Mm. You know? But then, it's like my grandmother would say, seven fitness, seven different minds. Yes. Everybody you encounter is, is, is just different. And you can't go by what it looks like on the outside. Right. You want to do, do it that way, though, because it makes it easier for you to understand yeah. and to categorize stuff. So it's easy for you to find solutions. But really and truly, you have to just take it one case at a time, one person at a time. Right, yeah. right. Totally understand. Um, so your album, which t tell us where we can get it. iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, um, um, Google Play. Um, yes, great. <laughs> yes, over 700, I heard. Yes, over 700 digital platforms. Wonderful. However, if you're not acquainted with those, you can also jump on my website. It's www.marshajministries.com or you can email um, bookmarshaj at gmail.com and we'll definitely ensure that you have a copy for yourself. Yes. Anywhere in the world, night or day, 24-7. We're here for you. Wonderful. And I would like to say, I would like to say to anybody who's listening, support Marsha J because... Um, her story is powerful. It is so powerful. And I think um, sometimes people go through real hell and we don't know. And I'm taking a, like, a lesson from even the, my conversation with you today where sometimes we expect people to know better when they really don't. Sometimes we expect people to do better when they really can't. Sometimes we expect people have all these expectations 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 where sometimes really when someone's showing up and they're not wearing the pain on their sleeve at, at least in the way you think they should it's not that they're not in pain it's that they're trying their best to cope with the pain right would you say yes because because that's a message i get from this interview where you are going through your hell and i often say i just don't think we should have to wait until someone keels over before we say, oh, darn, you really were. Oh, okay. 
And mm -hmm. for me though, to be honest, it sometimes it's such a challenge for me because you, on one hand, you don't want your kindness to be taken for weakness and nobody wants to be used and abused, right? On the other hand, you have real people going through real things, experiencing real challenges that sometimes really need your support. And sometimes both of you don't even know how to connect mm -hmm. to really understand each other, you know, because sometimes even the people who are showing up to help, they're going through something too. <laughs> You know, so um, no judgments and a matter of trying to, well, I always say everyone is performing at their best, but what, what advice do you have for um, entrepreneurs who want to, who, who are really committed to building something special, like a favor, right? Um, whether they're in music or not because favor is your product that you just built right um what is your advice to the young person who's going through it and and may not be seeing the support that they would expect or want um i would say first of all how you're feeling is completely natural because i've felt that way too many times about many things but what is important is your faith what do you believe to be true? Um, do you believe that you were really called for this? Is this something that you really have on your heart? Like it's the first thing you think about in the morning and it's the last thing you go to your bed thinking about at night. And if you believe in whatever it is that you're doing that much, I do honestly think that it will happen. Pace yourself. You understand? Pray about it. Be strategic. Plan but don't be too stiff on your plans. If you have a deadline of 24 hours, if it don't happen within 24 hours, it's completely okay. Just take your time, right? Because God does things according to time and our timing and his two different timing and he has a way of aligning things in place, you know? So take your time, do your homework, um get help if you can some i did not know where to find help and i did not know the type of help that i needed so when you pray and when you talk to the creator just tell him exactly what you want because i've always been praying i don't know how to create a trajectory for my life and god was so grateful i'm so grateful for a coach that the lord sent into my life my coach and um music labels and your other person along the way that will encourage you right i was going to ask you about your team like you sound like you have a team of people who really care for you oh yes oh yes it's and hard I, to find that is definitely hard to, to find. find yes because there are so many legalities where health is concerned like i remember um my first attempt at trying to be under a record label and I was turned down, they told me, go out and make two tracks and when they make the two tracks, then they come back to us. Wow. And these are persons that I knew have heard me live and have heard me sung, but their criteria, I couldn't match that. I just couldn't. And I was disappointed, you know, but then I said, okay, how am I going to get around this? Right? Because there are some things, there's not a drawback. you can, you know, Mm -hmm. do what you need to do and get around it so just god will do his thing his time because maybe well obviously that wasn't for me and yes. maybe the type of help that i needed they couldn't right me. so right. you have to look at things like that. there are many variables mm -hmm. uh, the word of the lord says that his plans for us are better than our plans for ourselves i could not have dreamed of a more different and a more dedicated team than the one i have i could not have done that on my own for sure you know, so I am extremely grateful. Wow. What's next for Marsha J? What's next? <laughs> wow. There's so many possibilities. Yes. I am super excited about the other brands on the MGM. Royal yes, tell us about them. Queen, Royal Events. So I am hoping to fortify those brands. You want to tell us about it? Tell us about them. Each of, give us a little on each of them. What exactly sure. they so, of course, everybody knows about MJM that has to do with the actual band that Marsha J. Ministries Band. Marsha J. Ministries Band. Mm -hmm. That provides inspiring and uplifting music. Um, there's a Royal Queen collection that is an online store. 
um, we try to give you the best rates on everything. Mm -hmm. And there's that's the hair that you're wearing now. Oh yes, this is a this is an MJM hair. This is a straight yeah. bob cut hair, mm -hmm. and that was inspired by my own hair loss. Um, and yeah, don't be afraid to be inspired by stuff that happens to you. You know, mm -hmm. something it's it's a, it's all a part of the plan of God to bless you, right? And then there is royal events where we host events for you. It doesn't matter how small, how large. Could be a baby shower, could be a birthday party, could be a wedding. Could also be a funeral but we're here for you to comfort and we have you know quite a number of persons on the team whether it's a counselor or a coach or whatever we have access to anything and everything it's an event so we help you to get that done and there's royal travel where we take you anywhere you want to go in style <laughs> royalty and you should travel as such so whether it's land air or sea then you're able we're able to help how you. does that work how does the royalty travel royal travel royal Royal travel, you said? Royalty travel. Royalty travel, right. How does that work? Okay, so in order to access that product, you can log on to the website, again, mashjministries.com, and then you'll see a tab at the upper right-hand corner that says travel, and you can book your travel from there. If it's a case where you need assistance with your passport or things like that, we can also make that service available for you, to you as well. Um, we'll so it's like a travel agent? It's a travel agency. You can okay yourself for those who are independent or we can assist you with the bookings okay wonderful uh anything is there anything else that you want to share with us before we go i'm trying to think of but mm -hmm. i just want to say thank you to everyone that has been supportive so far on the journey of marshall j um whether it's a friend even the disappointments and the foes and um, the persons in the faith-based ministries right across the world, right across the island, is voting for me or giving me a word of encouragement. Every this jockey, um, every business that has ever invested, because it's an investment. I want to say a big thank you to everyone and um, continue to support because my aim is just to serve. Minister just means to serve. And this is the way God has chosen me to serve. And I hope to continue serving him. Wonderful. Favor. That's the album title by Marsha J. It has 15 songs and it's all about you. Favor, Unconditional Lover, Miro, Grateful, Jesus Prayed For Me, Slain For Me, Victory, I Know You, Happy, It's A Good Day, Spiritual Food, Triumph, Nothing But The Blood, and Happiness Blooms In Red. Fantastic. Thank you so much for this interview, Marsha. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> to know Christ is more than what men can attain. To know Christ is the greatest gain. He is my friend. He knows my name, he knows me, he knows me, he knows me, he knows me. My greatest desire is to hear Jesus say, enter my kingdom with me, you will reign. When I stand before the king, I want to hear, I know you, I know you, I know you. Well done, my child. You and I are having a conversation about Marsha J, why she was signed, your role as the producer, and you're oh, the musician, right? Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. That's been my endeavor. Okay. Well, you make yeah. beautiful music. When did that begin? When did you start doing music? Well, it's so interesting. I mean, I actually studied electronics. Um, um, but, you know, I, as a kid, um, I was always fascinated with um, this is, but, Gonzalo, this, this little band came um, to to the uh, to a church, and the guy was just playing the bass, and he was a little kid. I think it was about, maybe it was five or six or so, um, watching this little man playing the bass, and I just never got the line, you know, do 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 do, and um, so that sort of sparked something. We had a little band, you know, we we you know we the drums were made up of um, pots and pans and you know buckets and 
and and so on. So you know, it was pretty much noisy. But you know, it, you know, that was like the birth of trying to do something as a little kid. You know, not necessarily exposed to any type of um, music clubs, anything. It was backyard stuff. And um, so any, anyway, we stayed at my uncle for about three years. He had a guitar. And I started to learn, you know, like the bass and, you know, play a little guitar. And um, Eastern at the time was at school, was in Elam. And um, we would come over in summers, you know, and play, do a little playing. What he would write his little song and so on. And, um, then we migrate to the United States. And um, so we put together a little band. You know, just trying little things, and um, you know, but with me, it was um, had an insatious, an insatious um, appetite to create. That's um, it, just something that was was just it was actually in, internal. I think it was just embedded inside of me, just to always create. In so much that when I went to, I went to school into college. And when I took um, music school, I just couldn't learn. I, I had trouble learning the notes because I, uh, in the practice room, it would just feel so boring because I wanted to always create something. We did a little, uh, uh, there was a competition on the radio. Um, so we went and we bought some equipment, rent some equipment, wrote a little song also. Um, he's like the other half of me because I'm the twin. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm the right. twin. <laughs> And, you know, so we, what I did, we rented um, some equipment and sequencing it, took the studio, set it up to the rear, and it won. I said, wow. wow. This is like, yeah. It's, it's just, <laughs> so that started to birth something. Mm -hmm. We formed a group and um, we did, um, we, you know, sang around, you know, pretty decent voices, book a weekend a studio, a whole weekend, took the group there, record a whole album. And um, it was a very nice album. Um, it was, wasn't released, but, you, you know, some entertainment lawyers heard the album and took it to Medium. And it was like huge in the conferences. So we got some interest. Like, wow, um, the companies, they, um, they, it was like an almost, you know, give, bring me back something, you know. So we came back to the drawing board. We did this song with uh, um, this girl in Natasha. She was one of Luther Vandross' um, background singers. Phenomenal, phenomenal singer. We did the song called Matter of, the T Matter of Time. And that, boom, um, two companies in South Africa. How did it start to progress? And then, so we started auditioning and we form a group and it's a lot of major things happen. And that's how, you know, we start to develop and so on. So it led me to this, to this level um, of production. And how I met Marsha um, is um, she came to my church. She was saying, um, Oh, so you were the music director? I was, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, that's just spoke of, okay. I am, I am the guy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I met Marsha, and what happened is that, um, you know, I heard his voice at church. His voice, like, wow. You're singing the priest, the, the, the singers weren't all that great, but when she came and sang, it's like, wow. It's like, something, something just changed. Like, and um, plus the anointing and the, the, the passion and the, and, and, you know, the level of, of presentation was just amazing. Anyway, I was working with Abby King, Abby King, and uh, which, you know, I produced. And I need to, you know, said, hey, Marsha, do you want to do some backgrounds for me? And uh, she's okay. I said, Marsha, okay, you do some backgrounds for me. And uh, she came and she did some backgrounds for Abby King. And I said, Marsha, how do you want to be compensated? Do you want me to pay you? Or do you want me to do a track for you? I gotta give her that very smart. She said, do a song for me, do a track for me. And so I had, a, you know, I was doing some music and I sent it, sent the music to, she went back to Jamaica and I sent the music to her. And when she came back, she had just one like walking in a favor, walking in a favor. But she said she couldn't, that's all she had. She really couldn't, you know, it was, okay, let's sit down and let's, let's work this thing out. And we sat and we just write the song. And so that's really the birth. That, that song came from that we actually made. 
So that's how that song came. Honestly, I had no intention of signing anybody else because I just finished ABK and I was in a little, you know, I was going to wait for about two or three years. Or so. Just, you know, and so I really didn't, weren't really, I knew Marsha was very good. I really liked her voice, like her vibes. I, I said, Ethan, um, she sounds, she don't sound like a Jamaican. That's what I said. And that's one of the reasons why I also used her because she didn't sound like a Jamaican. I said, wow, she sounds, she has a, you know, that sound. But with that, you know, I still didn't have an intention of uh, really signing her. Uh, something very interesting happened at, um, at one of the service at church. Jackie Gates, is, she's a prominent preacher, uh, prophetic, she's a music prophetic. And while Marsha was singing at, at, at uh, prison worship, she just got up and prophesied to her and said that you are going to, you're going to um, be signed by a record company and a producer and all these great things are going to happen. I'm there, I'm there sitting, sitting in the congregation. I was like, okay. But she doesn't, Jackie doesn't know that I am, I, I'm actually, nobody really, she really don't know. And I'm there sitting, I'm there listening to her prophesying all these things to her. And, and I said, okay, but I still didn't say anything. I said, okay, maybe, you know, I'm just going to let it, it wasn't me, you know, in other words, it, I really didn't really push. And, um, but Easton, I have to give him some credit. Um, Easton also kind of pushed, because I, honest, you know, it's not that I didn't think that she was um, phenomenal. I think I also was going through a very interesting time. So, you know, I really wanted to, you know, not to fool anybody else in yet. And, you know, but he's, I must give Ethan credit for pushing that marcher, pushing that, that sign. And I think this is what I think happened. I think the prophecy came and some God used Ethan, right? Because I was there. I heard everything pretty much. And I think God used Eastern to push me because <laughs> I would, you know, without, if I had said no, you know, it's just a no. So God used Eastern to encourage me and push me. I said, all right, oh gosh. And, um, and then something happened though. Marcia said something. She said she, she entered the JCDC competition more than once. But this time after the prophecy, things just start happening. It's, it's incredible. And it was so it was so powerful. It was it was so powerful. You know what? What is so interesting? The most interesting thing. And that lady, that Jackie Gates, I was one time was playing on the keyboard and she was preaching. And she stopped, turned around, and says, God is going to give you song. No, I'm not a writer. She says, but it says, God, I'm God is going to give you song. Just you know, walk with a pad and so on. And the reason why I said that, because I did a lot of writing, most of the writing on the album. Um, you know, um, Keith is a prolific writer. Um, and he did, he did minimal. Um, Easton is also a writer. So it's, it's what is so interesting, uh, there's a connection. Uh, um, some connection happened where, where the, this, these songs, and you talk about inspiration and why these songs are like, are chose for the album. I think it was a connection. Um, it was the, some sort of connection made in the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. Um, because here, Marsha, God prophesied to Marsha that this is what, this is, this is the direction of her life. I was there, I was the producer. And the prophecy came that I'm going to write the songs. I'm going to write the songs. See? See the connections? And I did a lot of songs. Marshall wrote... Um, Unconditional Triumph. Lover? Triumph? And Unconditional Love. Right. Those are the two. But the other songs, basically, Favor, we wrote together. And pretty much um, Keith wrote, it's called Spiritual Food, and also um, Miro, my brother. He wrote those two. And Easton wrote Slain for me. And so, uh, and also Keith wrote Jesus Makes Me Happy also. Jesus Makes Me Happy. Yeah. That's Jesus Keith. Makes Me Glad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that was, an old, that was written like um, 
you know, that was written a couple years ago. But the point of trying, I'm trying to make is this, this connection. Right? It's a yes. weird kind of connection, that unexpected right. connection. It's one that I was really looking for. That's really how things, you know, manifest and came to fruition in terms of us working together. Um, you know, and, and, and what was so interesting about it, it was, it was, it wasn't hard. It was, things just flow. It wasn't difficult. It wasn't challenging. Things just happened, happened really quickly. You know, there weren't really any bump. I must say though, Marsha, she recorded most of the album. The, the latter part, or when she came back, she recorded a lot of part of the album with a lot of pain. A lot of, she was really sick. Really, really sick. I really commend her for that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's called, um, and I'm, I'm going to say it was an issue of, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's that woman with an issue of blood. I'm telling you. It's, <laughs> she bled for a year. So you, I never made the connection, but you're right. So, I mean, there were times when this process to me, and it was, it was like the woman with the issue of blood because she did it. And, and, um, and I think, you know, this, this songs, um, I think they're, they're blood stamp. That, you know, that is actually powerful. You can never, wow. I mean, it's, it's, it's the kind of moment. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, um, we basically kept the, all the vocals, the original. We really didn't really redo anything because there's, a, there's that authentic mode and mood and pain and, and pushing through the pain to actually do this album. It's, you can just, just can't imagine. Uh, I think any other woman, I believe that they would have captured uh, they, It's incredible. It's, I, I'm telling you, it's, she's a strong, strong, strong. And sometimes with great height and great uh, blessing comes with, you know, pain, comes with great pain. It, especially when you're a Christian, because the enemy, you have an arch enemy, and you're now becoming a threat to that whole spiritual aspect. But what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that this album, it is not a mere, um, uh, a mere coincidence. It was prophesied and it was birthed through pain. And, and my pain too. My, it's, a, it's a different story. But the album was birthed through pain. And that's what makes this album so special. That was so lovely. How do I come from that? Know that it has, there's so many thoughts going through my head. <laughs> this is like the last project I would have worked on if I had a choice. <laughs> so it has a lot of thoughts in my head. Um, how has it come full circle? You went through that. You weren't really ready to sign anybody, but you did. Know that that has happened. Any regrets? Oh, well, let me tell you something. Um, it's the funny thing. Um, because I, was, I wasn't ready, doesn't mean that God was not the orchestra, the, um, the engine, or the God wasn't the, the architect. Um, I believe the law was architect, and um, actually, I'm very, very happy. It, what was so? Let me tell you what was so interesting. There were um, the song "I Have the Victory" that was written about 20 years ago. Uh, you know, the idea. I went. I was in London and um, gathering champion. That's where we got the we got the song. And um, but I was actually I um, had it auditioned because I was going to give it to that white girl. Um, I worked with a, a white girl named Stephanie. I was going to call her up because of the type of sound. And I, you know, I just didn't want to anybody to do it because I didn't want to compromise the, the direction, the feel, the sound. So when I said, Marsha, try this. I said, those God. When Marsha, when I heard that voice, if, if you notice, that voice sounds totally different from the old album. I have the victory. Because I wanted to be that Jewish, that, that, um, that type of uh, nothing crazy. You know, pretty much pop popular, and you know, especially among Christian. And what's so interesting, what's so interesting about even that song is that when I mentioned, you know, it being Jewish and all, Marsha said, you know, for the last few weeks I've been listening to a lot of Jewish songs, and and that's how that and it's okay, well, and that's where the conversation about you no know, having a Jewish. Um, you know, we sing one of the chorus in June, and, and that's how that came, and that is so interesting. And so, when see how this how God works, 
absolutely. Um, I I love Marsha. She's a she's a beautiful person, and um, she's humble, and she's the right person for not for the for, for God to exalt beyond the ordinary because she's humble and. What moved me really with Marsha, it started as a great honor to work with me. And I said, yeah. And she was very humble because of, you know, with all of those things, you know, yes, I am, I am excited. I'm really excited for her. And I really believe that the Lord is going to take her places, you know. Uh, and I don't, those, I don't think those issues and the things, the things that she's been through is, is not for naught. It's something, it's something great. And, you know, those pain and sickness and all those things, it's, it has to be for something. I'm happy to be a part of this, um, a part, part of this, this journey. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. When a bowl is broken in Japan, it's put back together with the cracks being filled with gold, creating a beautiful lining. This is to emphasize the beauty in what was once broken. They believe that when something has suffered damage and has a history, it makes it more beautiful. And the same goes for human beings. Everything that you've been through, everything that you're going through, doesn't make your life uglier, although it may seem that way when we're going through it. It's up to us to choose to paint our struggles with gold and make it beautiful. You are not broken beyond repair. You can pick yourself up and learn from what's happened and become a better person from it because of the struggle that you've been through. You can wear your scars proudly as a badge of honor, as if to say, look at what I've been through. It's made me who I am today and I can get through anything life puts in front of me now. Nobody has had a perfect life and nobody ever will. It's only up to us if we choose to paint our broken pieces gold and make it beautiful. Don't be ashamed of what's happened to you. Everything that has happened to you has happened to you for a reason. So the more we deny, the more we complain and don't accept what's happened to us, then it doesn't become useful. The moment that we accept and find what's useful in the struggle, the things that we've been through, that's just like us painting the cracks in our broken pieces gold, turning something that could be ugly into something beautiful and inspiring. When what you have been through is inspiration for other people, then it was all worth it. So don't get stuck on how things used to be. I once heard a quote that said, every next level of your life will demand a new you. And sometimes it takes being broken in order to become that new version of yourself. So if you're going through hard times, I hope this video can help you or somebody that you love. My name is Sean Urana Hiran. Surikap. Thank you so much for joining me this week for Finding Happy Podcast. It was such a pleasure speaking with Marsha J and her producer from Style Records, Carl Marit. I hope you enjoyed this episode and have a fantastic phenomenal week make sure you smile laugh a little but overall just have a good time with your life okay have a wonderful have a wonderful wonderful day bye